Um, in terms of what I use, though, I use uh, I use Juvederm Ultra, and people always are very sort of critical of Juvederm. They say it it it, it has a mind of its own and, and can can go places. Um, certainly, I haven't found that when injecting within the closed system of 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 the mouth, the anatomical. Uh, closed system and I tend to use not more than 0.3 mal shock horror. So for me really it's it's a matter of remaining as true as possible to the presenting shape and the kind of classification I've uh, developed and we're now doing a very large study involving 214 uh, patients. Shows a very neat and reliable way of classifying uh, lip shape based on their tubicles. So for example, if you have a large central third tubicle, which is commonly referred to as M shape, you can also have a smaller central a tubicle, you can have no central tubicle, or you can have a very flat lip. Similarly on the uh, bottom lip, uh, you can have two little pillows with a central depression, or you can have a fuller lip or a very full lip or a flat lower lip. And so it's about remaining, in my opinion, true to the presenting shape and really bringing it out in the best way possible, as opposed to changing it to something completely, uh, to complete something completely different. But it's, it's not about uh, me and sort of, sort of doing my own sort of artwork as such. It's really working artistically with what is there. And that's, that is my uh, approach, essentially. In terms of philoreology, I think it's, it's a difficult one because philoreology we know, and, and, and Professor Cotofano has shown this at least in the lab, it's extremely unreliable and unstable. Um, and we know that it changes over time. And this is in the lab. and. So we don't have any sort of information, for example, of how biological factors interact with the filler. But we know, for example, through movement that a very soft filler can suddenly become a very hard filler. And so this whole talk about rheology is to me always, uh, is to me very, very confusing. And I think there is a lot more uh, we have to figure out. And so I say that in the meantime, really what we should be focused on is developing our skills, uh, you know, rather than uh, being slaves to the to to farmer. I'm not, I'm not saying you're you're a slave to farmer, but I, I think we need to be we, we need to be careful of that because uh, uh, because filler technology and rheology has been getting better and better supposedly in the lab that is, but it isn't reflected in our results, and so to me that is the issue. Um, in terms of what I use, though, I use uh, I use Juvederm Ultra, and people always are very sort of critical of Juvederm. They say it it it, it has a mind of its own and, and can can go places. Um, certainly, I haven't found that when injecting within the closed system of 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 the mouth, the anatomical uh, closed system. And I tend to use not more than zero point three mal shock horror uh, at most. Um, and one thing you may consider with the kind of filler that I use is that it, it, it's, it's very hydrophilic. So obviously it, it expands, but it is a low G prime, low viscosity uh, filler, meaning it's uh, very fluid. I've, it, it's got high fluidity. To me, that's an advantage. It's very soft. It's less, uh, less palpable, but it has high cursivity, meaning it's, it's, um, it sticks well. But the fact that it's hydrophilic to me is actually an advantage, not a disadvantage. Now, if you're, if you're in the habit of, if you injecting the vermilion border or going outside or, it, uh, you know, then it, it could be a problem because you're going to attract water to the wrong place. So I, I, I take that as a, a fair criticism, but I, I don't go there with the filler. So that is in a nutshell how I feel about things. So, so what is the actual, you've got a new name, the non-surgical tubercle tweaking tubicle. movement? <laughs> yeah, so, so lip tubercle technique is, so I work with that classification to, to bring out, to optimize the uh, lip shape. So for example, um, um, if the patient presents with prominent or, or, or visible uh, tubicles uh, with a central depression, I might want to bring that out a little bit 
further, or if they present with a very small central tubercle, I might want to bring that out further. If a large central tubercle with M-shaped, I might want to smooth it out a little bit on the sides and make it look less prominent. So it's about, to me, working artistically with the tubercles and the natural presenting lip shape. Mm. Yeah. So when you treat the, for example, the lip body or, or I guess the tubercle, you're, you're generally horizontal parallel with the lip? You, so the lip never... tubercles, then, yeah, no, it's a good question. The, the lip tubercles themselves may be treated with uh, tiny boluses and they may be um, adjusted, uh, shifted over in terms of their light reflexes. Um, and I call, I call it tubercle shifts. And the kind of lines that Julie talked about actually going from the fulcrum down over here, I actually termed them H lines because they fall beautifully on the lower lip tubercles where, uh, where the light reflexes are, are greatest. And you can, by injecting certain aspects of the tubercle, actually bring out those light reflexes. In other words, position the tubercles in such a way that you get the, uh, uh, the sort of the neatest uh, reflexes coming out um, and shape. So it's about working with light and um, with light and and shade actually, and looking at the lips in terms of a kind of hills and valleys sort of artistic way, and 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 working with that and 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 bringing it out. I I don't like the idea of flattening the tubercles because you're kind of, in my opinion, in my opinion, they should be celebrated, not flattened. Mm. Um, this is part of our natural anatomy and that's the way I view it. Thanks so much for watching the podcast clip. You can listen to the whole audio episode of the podcast on your favorite podcast app on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And please also leave us a review on the podcast app. If you like what we do, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when we release new content.